Hi, my name is Sharon Chen. This video is about the evolution and characteristics of mycobacteria and an overview of the life cycle of one specific mycobacteria, mycobacteria tuberculosis. The learning objectives are to compare mycobacterium tuberculosis with other members of the mycobacterium genus and understand their evolutionary relationships. To recognize that the M. tuberculosis complex is a group of highly related mycobacterial species that can cause tuberculosis disease in humans, but may have diverse primary hosts. To describe some of the characteristics of the genus Mycobacterium, and to describe the basic life cycle of M. tuberculosis that leads to infection of and transmission from human hosts. Mycobacteria are gram-positive bacteria, but have a unique lipid-rich cell wall that stains differently than other bacteria, and thus they are classified clinically as acid-fast bacilli. On a phylogenetic tree, mycobacteria are one of the oldest bacteria, branching out from the common gram-positive ancestor. They belong to the phylum actinobacteria, which is a group of soil and freshwater bacteria that dominate these environments. The genus Mycobacterium contains about 120 species, and many of them are in the environment in the soil and water. One Mycobacterium is different. Mycobacterium tuberculosis does not have an environmental reservoir. Mycobacterium tuberculosis, or MTB, is a human-adapted pathogen. Humans are its reservoir. Although many Mycobacterium are environmental, there are some, like MTB, that can infect humans. MTB is one of seven species within the MTB complex. Two of these species are the important ones to remember. M. tuberculosis, which causes tuberculosis in humans, and Mycobacterium bovis, which can cause infection in humans that clinically resembles tuberculosis. The reservoir for M. bovis is cattle, and humans are infected by eating or drinking raw, unpasteurized milk from an infected cow. The MTV complex is relatively new. About 70,000 years ago, it evolved from its predecessor compared to M. leprae, which is hundreds of thousands, perhaps millions of years older. Like MTB, M. leprae only infects humans. Mycobacteria that are not in the MTB complex are called non-tuberculous mycobacteria, or NTM. These mycobacteria are predominantly environmental, but can infect humans and other animals. Unlike MTB, non-tuberculous mycobacteria are not contagious. Human infection is a result of being exposed to an environmental source. NTMs are opportunistic in human pathogens and can cause disease primarily in immune-suppressed hosts. Mycobacteria are aerobic non-motile rods with a thick hydrophobic waxy cell wall. They grow very slowly compared to other bacteria. Here is a typical agroplate that we use to grow bacteria. The colonies of Mycobacteria TB are the white dots on this plate. It took four weeks to get the colonies to this size. If this plate was growing E. coli, it would look like this after less than one day. MTB divides once every 20 hours, whereas E. coli divides once every 20 minutes with optimal conditions. MTB grows slow because there are very few copies of ribosomal genes for replication. The cell envelope is impermeable, making it difficult to get nutrients and waste in and out. And there are metabolic costs to making all of these complex lipids, including mycolic acids. The slow growth can be advantageous. A lower metabolic rate enables time for mycobacteria to adapt to stressful environments. Mycobacteria's unique lipid layers in the cell wall confer unique characteristics. With a cell wall that is, has a high lipid content, mycobacteria have low permeability and are resistant to many antibiotics, to disinfectants like chlorine, and to desiccation. The hydrophobic cell envelope also helps them form biofilms at the air-water interface. And at this air-water interface, mycobacteria can procure carbon sources that other organisms don't use. For example, Mycobacteria can use their lipid metabolism to break down complex hydrophobic hydrocarbons, including a number of pollutants, such as oil. In this image of river water contaminated by an oil spill, you would find mycobacteria surviving at the air-water interface and digesting the oil. The environment where mycobacteria evolve can also be a very dangerous place with microscopic predators like free-living amoeba. Here, you can see an amoeba eating and digesting two poor unicellular protozoans called paramecia. 
In contrast, environmental mycobacteria have evolved the capacity to survive within an amoeba and may be a precursor to pathogenic mycobacteria surviving within human cells. Some mycobacteria have entered animals and evolved to adapt to humans. Perhaps the initial encounter with animals was through aerosolized water droplets containing environmental mycobacteria. Mycobacteria tuberculosis is an example of successful adaptation to humans, which began tens of thousands of years ago. MTB has co-evolved with humans. In fact, the spread of MTB out of Africa followed human migration. The coevolution of MTB in humans is distinctly shown by the figure on the slide. The strains of MTB match mitochondrial DNA from the same regions of the world. MTB is the paradigm for host pathogen adaptation. It has evolved its entire life cycle within humans, adapting to survive within a human and transmit to other humans. For the next several slides, I want to show you an overview of the life cycle for MTB in humans using our framework. In another video, we'll be discussing more details of each of these steps. As you will see, MTB uses its host for growth, for transportation, and even causes disease for transmission. The first step is enter. MTB is transmitted through respiratory droplets that are produced by a person coughing or sneezing, even shouting or singing. Those large droplets that you can sometimes feel after someone sneezes actually quickly settle to the ground, whereas the small droplets evaporate into droplet nuclei and can then be airborne with a half-life of about six hours. It's these invisible droplet nuclei that can transmit MTB. Recall that mycobacteria evolved at the air-water interface where they were often aerosolized. They evolved the ability to resist drying so they can remain in these dried out small droplets. The next step is colonize. Mycobacteria does not colonize the upper airway. It has to reach the alveoli. Droplet nuclei can more easily reach the alveoli because of their small size, about one to five microns in diameter. In contrast, the large droplets containing MTB cause less transmission because they don't aerosolize as well, and if inhaled, most are trapped in the upper airway. Each of the small droplet nuclei that reach the alveoli contain around one to three mycobacterium tuberculosis bacilli. In the alveoli, there are alveolar macrophages that patrol this region. Once the MTV infected droplet nuclei reach the alveoli, alveolar macrophages will reach out and engulf the bacilli. Although MTV are phagocytosed by alveolar macrophages, they don't die. Their ability to survive intracellular probably evolved from prior interactions with free living amoeba in the environment. Several properties allow MTV to survive within macrophages. For example, MTB can evade the immune response using their cell envelope lipids LAM, for instance, to inhibit fusion of the phagosome with acidic lysosomes. Phagolysosome fusion is a necessary step for the macrophage to kill MTB. Once MTB is safely in the phagosome of the macrophage, it can replicate there. It can also use the macrophage as a transporter to other areas of the lung or other parts of the body. Here's a video of macrophages infected with M. tuberculosis, which are the red colored bacilli. The macrophage is unable to kill them and the mycobacteria is surviving within it. The next part of the life cycle is persist. The hallmark of MTB infection is the granuloma. This is a well-organized multicellular structure of immune cells recruited to surround a foci of infection. However, granulomas are not just a site for trapping and killing bacteria. They are also a site where MTB can persist and actively modulate the immune response to grow and then exit. The next step is replicate. MTB grows slowly and under pressure from the immune system. Their growth can occur intracellular inside live macrophages, inside dying macrophages, and also extracellularly in necrotic tissue. The necrotic tissue within granuloma is called casein because it looks cheese-like. The necrosis is caused by an activated T-cell response that enables killing of MTB-infected cells. Many of the MTB bacilli are killed during this process, 
but some survive. The next step is exit. In about 10% of MTB-infected people, the bacilli continue to replicate in the casein. As the infected cavity expands, it erodes into the airway. Ironically, a robust immune response is required for this tissue destruction. Here's an image of a pathology specimen of a person who died from pulmonary tuberculosis. You can see the cavity in yellow filled with a cheesy material and eroding into one of the airways. The erosion enables release of MTB-filled casein into the airway, causing productive cough, and thus allowing MTB to exit the host. MTB can then transmit to another host, fulfilling its life cycle.